Hi, welcome to this tutorial on completing the square. Now, suppose you're asked to write this quadratic expression x squared plus 6x minus 1 in the form x plus p all squared plus q stating the values of p and q. Well, this particular format is often referred to as completing the square. And I'll show you how it's done. We'll start off with our quadratic expression that we're given. So if we just write that down, then we've got x squared plus 6x minus 1. And this is going to be identical to this expression. Now, to write that expression down, first of all, you'll notice we've got a bracket which is squared with an x in it, OK? So we'll just have an open bracket and we'll put a squared there. Now what we do is we always have this value here, the plus 6 in front of the x. We have what is called the coefficient of x. So if we have plus 6, we'd put plus 3 and we put that number in here. If this said minus 8x, I would have written half that number in here, minus 4. So you always write down here half the coefficient of x. Now what would we get if we squared this out? Let's just do it over here, see what we have. So x plus 3 all squared is the same as doing x plus 3 times another x plus 3. And in the usual way, if we were to expand this, this would be identical to x times x, which is x squared. Then we'd have x times 3, which is 3x. And then 3 times another x here, which is another 3x. So we've got 3x and 3x, which is 6x. And then we've got plus 3 times plus 3, which is plus 9. Now can you see that for the first part here, x squared plus 6x, that's exactly the same as what we've got here, x squared plus 6x. Only we've got plus 9 when we expand out x plus 3 all squared. And there is no plus 9 over here, it's just minus 1. So we need to make an adjustment for this. We need to subtract 9. I'll show you why. Because if we were to do x plus 3 times x plus 3, and then write down minus 9, I'll just do it in red here just so it stands out, what would we get? Well, we know that x plus 3 times x plus 3 gives us x squared plus 6x plus 9. So we'd have x squared plus 6x plus 9. But then I've introduced this minus 9. And so what that's going to leave us with is it's identical to x squared plus 6x, which is the first two terms over here. So all I need to do then is just halve the coefficient of x, which is the 3. We know that when we square this out, it gives us the first two terms. Only we generate plus 9, and there is no plus 9, so we need to subtract it. So I'll just write that in red here, minus 9. And we've seen down here that this gives us x squared plus 6x. But to make it identical to all of this, I need to minus 1. So put that minus 1 back in there. So what have we got when this is tidied up? Well, we've got x plus 3 all squared. And then minus 9 minus another one is minus 10. And you can see that this is identical to this format over there. It's identical to x plus p all squared plus q. So we've completed the square here. And what would our values of p and q be? Well, if we're answering this question, we should say where p is equal to the 3. And q, we've got to be careful on this one, we are adding minus 10. So q is minus 10. All right, so that's how we complete the square. Now you might like to try this next one. Suppose you're asked to complete the square for x squared minus 8x plus 5, say. 
Have a go at that. You might like to pause the video for a moment and then come back when ready and I'll run through the solution. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Let's see how you got on. Well, I'd want to say this is identical to, and I'd have my bracket, and we'll put a square there. We put an x at the front, and then we halve the coefficient of x. So in this case, it's minus 8. So if we halve that value, it's going to be minus 4. And what do we get if we expand x minus 4 all squared? Let's just do it over here, although you should be able to do it in your head. If we were to do x minus 4 all squared, x minus 4 times another x minus 4, we would see that this was identical to x squared. And then we would have minus 4x minus another 4x, which is minus 8x giving us these first two terms. But we have minus 4 times minus 4, which is going to be plus 16. Now we're not going to want that plus 16, so what we need to do is take it off. So I put it there. OK, minus 16. So when I expand all of this now, x minus 4 squared minus 16, it's just going to leave me with x squared minus 8x, the first two terms. And then I need to just write in that plus 5. So we'll put plus 5 there. So what does this come to? Well, it's x minus 4 all squared. And then minus 16 plus 5 is going to be minus 11. So this 2 is in this format. And if we needed to say what p was, p would be minus 4. And q would be minus 11. Alright, so two examples there, and hopefully you'll be able to use these as examples to do similar ones. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how we handle cases when you've got, say, a 2 or a 3, a number other than just 1 in front of the x squared. Okay, so I hope you'll have a look at that. And uh, for the moment then, that brings us to the end of this particular video.